is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, CE 2301 statics, reviewing exam number three, on the back page, centroids by composite sections was the first part of it, and we had this shape, but the first thing I would do if I got one of these problems is I would write down the formulas that are applicable, and that is x bar is equal to the sum of x tilde a over sum of a. y bar is equal to the sum of y tilde a over the sum of the areas. Okay, here's my shape. Because I need to know where I'm going for is where I want to uh, write those formulas down and think about them. Okay, I need the centroidal distances of the parts and pieces and the areas of those. So my shape looks like this, 150, 300, 360 on the X, and the whole thing's 360 millimeters high. And I need to break it up into three parts. This is one easy way. There's several ways to do this, depending on how you break it up. But something that I think helps me, especially when I'm first getting started, is to I want to know the centroid of these shapes of this triangle, this rectangle, this triangle. So if you're having trouble visualizing that, you might make these little marks, an X in the center, and show for a triangle at least that one-third distance. Just to remind yourself when you're doing the calculations of what that distance is. Okay, so my chart looks like this. My three segments, one, two, and three. My areas, uh, I've written them up here in the box. For the triangle, it's one half base times height, one half 150 times 360 for this triangle. Do the math, 27,000. For the rectangle, it's just 30 by three, 300 by 360, 108,000. This triangle is one half base times height, one half 360 times 300, or 360 times 360, excuse me, 64,800. Sum those up, I get almost 200,000, 199.8. Okay, now I need my X centroid for each piece. So that's the distance from the Y axis. So for area one, the triangle, it's two thirds of the base, where that's the one third. Two thirds of 150 is 100. Um, similarly, for Y tilde for the triangle, is one third up from the base. One third of 360 is 120. The rectangle is right there in the center, but I've got to add for the x distance, x tilde, this 150 plus half of 300 is 300. The y tilde distance is just half of 360, or 180. For this area number three, the triangle, uh, x tilde, I've got to add that one third of that base to 150 plus 300. So it's 450 plus 360 over 3, 570. And Y tilde is just uh, two thirds of its height, two thirds of the distance from the tip. Two thirds of 360 is 240. I do the math, I multiply area times each one of these columns. I get these columns, X tilde A, Y tilde A. You can see for yourself what those numbers are. I add them all up. And remember, I like to keep everything in the terms of in a consistent unit of 10 to the 6th when I'm dealing with all these millimeters and these large numbers. Anyway, so I get 72, 10 to the 6th, and 38.2, or essentially 10 to the 6th for Y tilde A. So my area to three significant digits is going to be, be 200,000 millimeters cubed. X bar is the sum of X tilde A over sum of A. This number, 72 million. Divided by that, 360 millimeters. Y bar is the sum of this Y tilde A divided by the area, 191 millimeters. Does that make sense? 360. This whole thing is what? 660, 810 wide. So 360 is kind of in the center of that. A little bit shifted to the left, which is right because I got a big negative triangle over here. That makes sense. White bar works out to be 191. The thing is 360 tall. Right in the middle would be 180. So it shifted up a little bit because I have a little more area 
above the uh, halfway point of its height, so this number makes sense. Theorems of Pappus and Goldenus was the last part. I had three questions on this. Once again, I see theorems of Pappus and Goldenus, and I write down the equations associated with a rev is equal to theta rl, v rev is theta ra. Hopefully, you're familiar with those what those components are. Okay, so the first problem was asking for um, this really should be 18. Anyway, surface area of the solid of revolution of the shaded triangle one revolution about the x-axis. So if I need the surface area, that's this number, a rev, which is equal to theta rl. So I'm looking for a length. And r is the centroid of that of those lines, of these three lines that make this up. So I, I gave it letters a, b, and c, just so I could talk about my line segments. And uh, I'm talking about the centroid of this line, not the area. Don't get confused by that. So the lengths of lines A, B, B, C, and C, A are here. A, B is 24. B, C is 32. C, A, or A, C is the square root of the sum of the squares. 32 squared plus 24 squared is going to be equal to 40. 40. Take the square root of it. So put those in my column, add them all up. The length of my line is 96. Now I want y tilde. I'm doing revolution about the x-axis, so I want the y distance. I don't care about the x-distance for this calculation. Centroid of AB is right up here, always 32 away from x, so y tilde is 32. Centroid of B made a little blue. BC is a little made a little cro blue cross there. Half of its height, 32, so that's 16. And the y tilde distance for AC is also half of its height, which is 32, so it's at 16. It's the midpoint of that line and measured from the x-axis. Do the math, multiply those columns out. I get y bar, y tilde L, the sum is 1920. So I can figure my y bar, but we'll see that we don't really need that. We can use this number, but anyway. So it's the sum of y tilde L's divided by the sum of the lengths. 1920 divided by 96 is 20 inches. That makes sense. It's a little bit more. My half midway point is half of 32 or 16, so I've got a lot more lines up away from the axis than I do towards it. So it makes sense. The, the central weight is shifted up from 16 to 20. That number makes sense. Now finally I'm ready for the AREV calculation which is theta, the uh, number of revolutions in radians, which is 1, so it's 2 pi. R is the centroid, the distance from the axis to the centroid of the lines, and that's 20, this number up here. And the L is the length of the lines, 96, do the math, 3840 pi inches squared. An area is inches times inches. But I also can do it by y, the sum of y tilde L is also really just RL. So it's just also 2 pi 1920. Here I did it at, without a pi in there. The test, of course, had a pi included in all these answers. Finally, uh, let's do the volumes of solid of revolution of the solid of the shaded triangle about the y-axis first and I go up to my calculation the volume of revolution is theta r a so I need the area of this solid of this triangle so the triangle's area is easy to calculate one half base times height or 384 inches squared so the volume of revolution is theta r this is R, I'm revolving about the y-axis, so I need my x-bar distance, the centroid of that triangle. So R is two-thirds of its width, or its base length is 24, so two-thirds of 24, times the area, 384, that I got up here is 12,290. I would report it three significant digits, 12,300 pi inches to the third. And once again, I have a, a length times an area, so I do have inches to the cube, which is good because it's a volume. Finally, 20 is the solid revolution about the x-axis, so I need my y-bar distance. 
the other numbers are the same, 2 pi and 384 for the area. But this time my y bar distance, which is r, is for a triangle, it's 2 thirds from the tip. So that's 2 thirds of 32. The number works out to be 16,380 pi inches to the third.